Hi guys, this is Lance again from Runtime Recruitment. In a previous video, I showed you guys how to install Raspbian on a micro SD card because Raspbian is needed before you can install Home Assistant. So this video is really about installing Home Assistant on an already prepared, booted up Raspberry Pi. Now the one I used was Raspberry Pi 3 so that particular software Raspbian was on a micro SD card and I pretty much uh, used that to uh, boot up the Linux version for Raspberry Pi and I'm going to be showing you guys how to install Home Assistant on that particular version of Linux so enjoy and by the way if you like these videos and uh, you find them useful please give a like and subscribe to our channel because we'll be bringing you more embedded videos very very shortly so please enjoy and please comment as well thank you okay so once you've done that you've actually put the image onto the SD card you need to plug that SD card into your Raspberry Pi and boot the device up so it should just boot up you know it should boot up no problems uh, if you did everything it should just boot up into a desktop if you've got HDMI cable connected to a monitor or a TV. If you don't want to do that, as long as it's connected to a network, probably via an Ethernet cable, that would be a good idea because you probably haven't set up the Wi-Fi. So just connect an Ethernet cable. If you don't want to configure it using a keyboard and mouse and you want to do it on another on another PC, in my case, I'm doing it across the network on my, on my OS X machine, uh, you can just issue the SSH command. And it's pretty straightforward, SSH. Um, the SSH command is is like this. It's just SSH and uh, Pi. Pi being the actual default um, username for because that's what's given. Pi is the username and Raspberry is the password. So it's a good idea to change the password using the configuration um, program that comes with Raspberry Pi. That's the first thing you want to do is change the password. And there's a few other things you can configure as well in that program. You can configure the the time zones and the regions, etc. And there's a few other things which might, you might want to do. And I think it's a good idea to do that. Do it later. It's not important right now. The, best, the most important thing to do is to, to uh, if you want to do it remote like I have, just issue this command in a terminal window. And it'll come back with a password. The, the, the default password is Raspberry. Put that in and you'll get, basically, you'll get, you'll get a shell. And then you can start playing with things. So once you've got the shell, then all you need to do, you need to do this, you need to put this command in. Make sure it's got internet connectivity, of course. Make sure that the, your Raspberry Pi is connected to the internet through your router. And then if it is, then what you need to do is just issue this command. Now, what this is going to do, it will take a while. So just be patient. Now, what, what you're going to do is watch out. There's a one little catch here. As soon as you issue this command, watch the window because it will actually stop uh, and ask you for the password again. Um, so it'll ask you for your, your password. Type in Raspberry because you haven't obviously changed the default password. And then it will just start downloading and the packages and uncompressing them, putting them in the right directories, etc. And it's going to take a while. And as it says here, it'll, it can take up to two hours. Mine took a bit. Mine didn't take as long as that. The internet is pretty quick where I am. So, But it can take an hour or at least an hour so, so to actually just download all the repositories and all the files that you need for the whole package. So once you've got the whole package down there, you need to basically do a few things um, to to get it working. Now, obviously what you need to do once, once it's actually installed, uh, you can configure the system. Now, the way they configure it, or way that um, Home Assistant does it, is through a configuration file called YAML YAML. Now, this file is really like a script file, and really allows you to set up all your sensors and basically everything, time zones, the whole gambit. I'll show you a version of that in a second. But really, that's the first thing that you need to do is set up that file, change a few parameters on it. By default, it shows a splash screen, and it will automatically also try to search if that control is in there. It will try and search for any devices. Like I, in my case, it uh, it found uh, my lights, my Philip Hughes, and then asked me to configure them. And I, I did that on the Hue Hub. Uh, clicked that button, and then basically it, it actually found the, the lights and was able to set them up. So um, 
this is the um, address that you need to go to. So you need to know what your IP address is. So you need to replace your Raspberry Pi with your internal IP address and this port number 8123. That's the default port uh, that it actually talks over. So um, once you do that, you should get a splash screen which uh, shows you uh, really um, it's 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 a it's a basic setup really. It, it doesn't really do anything except show you what to do in the way of help screens etc so but that but if you're getting something when you go here that means your raspberry pi is working but before you can do that you've got to actually issue one other command to actually get because it's not running um a chrome job so you have to manually type in uh, in another terminal window you have to type in uh, the hash command so i'll show you what i mean by that so i've got two terminal windows here so really what you do see all this um, I had to actually, you, you have to type this um, command in called hash H A -S, S. That really starts the program. It starts the web server and you can see all this stuff. It's, it's, it's doing its thing. It's loading the libraries. It's, it's really configuring everything for, and this is going to have to run in an infinite loop. It's, so you run it in a terminal window. I will put this in a Chrome job so it just starts automatically. That's what you should be doing anyway. So it just starts automatically. You don't have to worry about it. But uh, when you first uh, install it, you wouldn't have done that. So you have to issue this command. Otherwise, you'll get nothing. So issue that command and then and then go to this on your web browser and then you will get Home Assistant. Now, everything should be installed. So in order to actually change the configuration file, you need to navigate to this directory here. This is the, so you're going to do a CD, uh, this directory. And basically that's where you'll find this file. You'll see this file here. So I'll show you, I'll show you here. So I've, I've done it here. Um, I've uh, changed to, see there, I've changed to this directory. And, um, and that's where I can then edit the file. So I can then just use sudo nano is the editor I use and then configuration. And then you can edit the file. Now the actual file I can show you what it looks like. So if we go in here, you can see the base. So really, it's really quite, quite a really, I mean, it appears complicated when you first look at it. So don't be phased by the complexity of it. It's actually pretty straightforward. It, there are sort of like um, keywords with a colon that's, that actually tells when, when this is, this, this, part is, within, this file is parsed, it looks for these tokens and then Whatever's under the token, it will then um, take as a trigger or a command. So you know, just make sure that you know you you change um, you 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 play around with this and, and understand it. It's actually pretty straightforward, and you know th this this site will actually allow you to navigate uh, through all or set all the setup. But you do, you get a basic configuration file, and you can go and modify different things. So so here's an example, for instance. There's an example of um, Let's have a look at, uh, we won't, go, we'll, we'll just go into time zones and things. So here, here's the thing, for instance, temperature, you can, you can select if you want it in Fahrenheit or in centigrade, ever, ever, elevation, you know, but really, you know, it's to do with uh, the altitude and longitude so that, you know, it knows where you are in time and space. There you go. Um, and this is important information later on when you are wanting to set up triggers based on different times of the day. And weathers and so on, and also geographical location. It's quite important to to change that because that that information is used um, for triggering events. Um, of course, you can change the name of of your home assistant by its default. Its default is home. You can change it to something else. And and your password. There is no password by default, so it might be a good idea to put your put a password in just to protect your um, installation. Now, of course. If you are going to be actually using uh, a VPN and uh, you want to go and have external access to your home automation system outside your internal network, you have to go through your router and configure it for port forwarding. Um, and therefore, the need for a password is even greater there. So security is very important, guys, uh, particularly if, you, if you're going to put a lot of devices on your on your hub uh, and, uh, you know, you can get hacked and, if these things are controlling electrical sockets and so on, it's pretty dangerous. So I suggest security is key. Make sure that your, all your encryption keys are there. There's a whole swag of stuff on here as well about remote access and how you can use DuckDNS uh, and how you can use uh, encryption using Let's Encrypt. 
it's very, very important if you're actually routing any of your internal traffic outside to outside into the big wide world that you really consider security as a as a key thing because particularly if you you're you're getting devices which are electrical devices controlling high amperages, uh, it's very critical that you you actually take heed of security. You might think it's uh, it's it's not necessary, but I can assure you as the world of the internet gets even darker you have to uh, and it gets more complex by the day uh, the things you do today will give you some peace of mind going forward so security is very very important so um look i i'll give you a demo of my own system probably in the next video but that's basically it it's very simple and straightforward to set up this website home assistant is very comprehensive and you just never get your way around it and uh and, and you'll basically get everything you need now, what I did is I'm actually using um, a Z um, stick. I'm using this one here, um, and it's all recognized. Uh, and there's a way to make it see that as well. Um, I, will, I will actually be showing you guys that in motion working in the next video. So anyway, have some fun. It's pretty straightforward to set up. Don't get, don't get phased out about it. It's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. Now, using this, uh, using this website and watching a couple of videos, you'll be able to sort it out. You'll be able to fix it up. No worries. All right, enjoy. Have fun.